From this, you know you will, and when you do... <laughs> Jackie, wake up. Everything's okay. <sighs> there you go. You're out of it now. You fell out of the bed. Benny? I, I don't understand what's happening. Is this... Is this hell? Okay, that's a new one. This is the darkness, isn't it? It's some kind of trick. Jackie, don't start talking about that stuff again, okay? The darkness isn't real. It's just in your mind. What? I'm sorry, but I know you get confused by all this. These bad dreams are a part of being sick. You gotta help us get you well again. I'll tell you what. You go by the dispensary before breakfast, and I'll tell the doc you had a good night. They're rewriting us all. Even you. I'm not even supposed to be here. Just calm down, Mr. Walker. What the fuck is happening to me? Hey, Jackie, I got the thing you wanted. It's big. Johnny, talk to me. What is all this? Some kind of darkness trick? That's what I told them, but they wouldn't believe me. They got bad wrists from all the computers. I tried to get your rocket in here, but it was too big. That's why I don't go outside no more. Johnny, you gotta help me get out of here. You think there's some kind of secret key to everything, Jackie? It's Tuesday. You take your medicine and then you get your meatloaf. God damn it. I don't feel right in my head. I think I'm not alone. It's too bright here. Au revoir. Arrivederci. I think he's the one. Good luck. He's not the one. The eyes are too close together. No, I'm not. All right, so let me I get think he's straight. the one. He says he he's not the one. The eyes are too close together. No, I'm not. Come on. Tell me something. Anything. We're working on a plan to escape this place disguised as a Band-Aid. Yeah! A 
We're not sure if we can pull it off. Thanks for nothing. Don't come back. But I already had a nap. Tony, please, tell me you know what the fuck is going on here. Lima beans are spies. Fuck me. Jackie, Dr. James is looking for you. He wants to talk to you. It's okay, you're not in any trouble. Just go see him in his office. Frank. Frank, I'm so sorry about Eddie. Oh, you mean Edward? He's right over there waiting by Dr. James's office. Go on over there, all right? How are you today, Jackie? You should really remember to take your medication. Bye-bye now. Come on, Jackie. Dr. James is waiting for you. Dr. James Jimmy. is waiting, Jackie. Jackie, come on in. I'd hoped I'd see you this morning. Please, have a seat. Now I know this ain't real. <laughs> No fucking way you're a doctor. I've heard from your nurse that you're getting worried about your medication again. Do you understand why you take the medicine, Jack? I'm not crazy. This is just an illusion. If you know it's an illusion, you could make it go away. But we've had this discussion before. You can't make it go away. Because it is not an illusion. Don't you see what's happening, Jimmy? The darkness is inside our heads! You mean the voice you hear, Jackie? The one that makes you do bad things? Does that seem reasonable to you? Look, I'm not gonna skirt around the issue any longer. Dr. Vic and I are concerned that you're making up new rules as you go along. Mafia fiction's fine for television, but not for real life. You're not the head of a crime family, Jackie. You're a patient in this institution, and we're trying to help you get well. There is something wrong with this place. You are not keeping okay. me here! Let's just stay chill. Dr. James is trying to help you. Eddie, shut the fuck up! Jackie, I know you're upset, but I'd like you to use your quiet voice now. I no longer wish to speak to your darkness voice. Fine. Let me out of here. I gotta take a walk. All right. Nobody's stopping you. Edward, take him to see Nurse Jenny. Come on, Jackie. Just try to stay calm, Jackie. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say, Doc. Let's go see Jenny, Jack. Is it morning already? Is it morning already? Alpha. What the fuck's going on here? What I really want to do is paint. Well, not you too. Jackie, I'm so glad you're back on your med cycle. It's a very positive sign. Dr. Vic's been asking me about your progress. He's very concerned for you. We all are. Jenny, I don't know what this place is, but I'm gonna get us out of here. Why would I want to get out of here, Jackie? I work here. I'm here to help you. No. No, not you two. Not you two! What the fuck is happening? Just stay calm, Jackie. It's going to be all right. Now... Last time we talked, you were telling me about the delusions you've been having. You said you were the head of a mob family and that your house was under attack by men trying to steal the darkness from that you. That wasn't a delusion. That just happened. I know it did. I know it feels real, Jackie, but it's 
Jenny, you gotta listen to me. I think this might be hell, a and we're trapped here. I'm gonna get us out. I can see why it seems like hell to you sometimes, but it's just a hospital. I want you to trust me. Everyone here is trying to help you. I don't know why this is happening, Jenny. You were dead. I saw you die. We talked about this, remember? When you don't take your medicine, you have a hard time separating fiction from reality. You get a lot of bad dreams when your serotonin's out of whack. It makes you think you're remembering things that never happened. But... my family, my, my friends... the darkness... Jackie, none of this is real. I'll work out a schedule with Dr. Vic. Play your cards right, and we can see a lot of each other, okay? Jackie, you okay? My schedule? What? Jenny, you don't understand. You're in real trouble. We both are. We're getting out of here. Now! Jackie, whoa, no. whoa, big guy. Code white! <clears throat> Easy, Jackie. <clears throat> Let go oh, of me! God. Come on. You are ah. doing All right, here we go. Easy, easy. Calm down, Jackie. We're not gonna hurt you. Keep him still. Geronimo! Johnny, cut it out! Go! Two! Three! Get him off, would you please? Run, Jackie! Get Come back here, people. Jackie! Head for the bunker! Tell Eva he must have ate some prunes. He's running for the door! Jackie, get oh, back here! This way. There's nothing out there for you! See, as long as the bloodline continues, the darkness will always have a new host. Found that out my fifth birthday. Woke up in the middle of the night with my dad, just sitting on my bed, hovering over me. Butcher knife in his hand. Still not really sure if the crazy fuck was thinking of putting me out of my misery, or making sure no one else would take his place. Make it stop, Jackie. Jackie, Jesus. I can't believe it, you're back. You said the darkness won't let you die, but I, I never believed you. It took it four days to repair you after you got shot in the face. Oh, those are my fucking mind. Look, Jackie, I don't uh, know how to tell you this, but... Uh, they arranged the funeral for your Aunt Sarah today. God damn it. God damn it. It's my fault. It's my fault they killed her. It was that prick Bragg. After he shot you, your Aunt Sarah, he... Uh, uh Jackie, uh... I'm so sorry. Jesus. It's all gone to shit. Your boys beat the Brotherhood back. Chase them out of here. But you know that wasn't the last of them, right? We can't let the Brotherhood take the darkness, Jackie. That's not gonna happen. The darkness. The darkness has Jenny's soul, and it wants these Brotherhood jackoffs dead and the siphon for itself. If I don't play ball, it says it'll keep her forever. Jackie, that siphon in the darkness's hands is not good. It's too powerful. With the siphon, it could overwhelm you. Take control completely. I don't have a choice. I won't let it hurt Jenny. Jackie, let's uh, let's take a step back here, okay? Let's let's think about this. So, what, what if, uh, what if she isn't even real? Hmm? The darkness plays tricks on you, huh? It makes you see things. No, it's her. I know it. I feel it. So, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to my aunt Sarah's funeral. Then I'm gonna go kill a lot of people. Be careful, Jackie. The Brotherhood will stop at nothing to get the darkness. Nothing. Okay, I'm looking at this, and what I'm seeing is the Chime of Deliverance. But, and mind you, this is a small but. All records of the Chime said it was destroyed along with Solomon's Temple back in 586 BC. That said, records have been wrong in the past, so who knows? Maybe it's the real thing. The Chime first dates back to the Forty Year War, that period of time when Moses and the Israelites fought the darkness in the wilderness. The Chime wasn't designed to be a weapon. Instead, it was an instrument of safe passage. According to the secret histories, the Chime was carried ahead of Moses' army and struck every 153 steps. Now, any army in history would tell you that ringing a bell nonstop is a bad idea. That's how your enemy finds you. Thing is, the darkness is no ordinary enemy, and the Chime is no ordinary bell. 
You're in the mob. The mob is Italian. Italians like opera, right? Well, you know how an opera singer can shatter glass by singing a certain note? Well, the chime of deliverance does the same thing, except instead of glass, it shatters darkness. The exact pitch has never been identified, but when struck, the chime emits a sound that can physically push back the night. Now, if you want, we can test the chime's authenticity. We just gotta hit it, you know, make it sing. But, and this is a much larger but. A but of epic proportions, really. It might disintegrate you. Just saying. Think back to your high school history class. Wait, did you even go to high school? You know what, forget it. I don't want to argue, nor do I want you to punch me in the face. So I'll just catch you up to speed on some stuff I'm sure you already know. The lost colony of Roanoke was a British colony off the coast of what we now call North Carolina. As the name implies, it disappeared. Okay, the colony, not the island. 115 people just whoosh, gone. Okay, goodbye. To this day, no one knows what happened to them. Well, no one except for me, and every other supernatural junkie on the planet. See, the darkness was first carried to North America by one of the colonists. And where the darkness goes, its enemies follow. One of those enemies, the Angelus, came to a nearby tribe of Croatoan natives. Influenced by the Angelus, a Croatoan maid slipped into the colony under cloak of night, and massacred the colonists in their sleep. This is the weapon she used, Roanoke's Bane. But the Angelus had been mistaken. The darkness was not in Roanoke, as it was being carried by the colony's leader, John White. John was back in England, procuring more supplies. When he returned to find Roanoke deserted, the darkness knew the Angelus had been there. Unfortunately for the Croatoans, the Angelus had already moved on. They were defenseless when the darkness fell upon them, much like the colonists had been. Fair's fair, I suppose. You know, this isn't the first time the Brotherhood has tried to take the darkness. Yeah, things look bleak right now, but believe it or not, they've done worse. A lot worse. It was a long time ago. So far back, no one knew the Brotherhood even existed. They'd been around, but necessity required they keep a low profile. See, they were watching the darkness, studying it, learning what made it tick. They already knew enough not to fuck with the darkness. So if they were going to move against it, they needed to be totally confident in their knowledge. I have to give them credit. The Brotherhood knew what they were doing. They accurately predicted who the next host would be. Swapping children at birth, they raised the host as one of their own. Then, when he came of age, they chained him to a table and tortured him to death. This is the blinding sun. One of these was inserted into each of his eye sockets, gouging out each eye in the process. Each device was then slowly expanded until it shattered his forehead and cheekbones. This was the first of twelve tortures. The darkness didn't manifest itself until the fourth. That means it took two more of these unspeakable acts before the Brotherhood could be certain they had the right guy. That doubt didn't even slow them down! These are bad people, Jackie, and they have it in them to be a whole lot worse. You know, Jackie, you bring me the nicest things. Your methods could be a little less mass murdery, but who am I to argue? Anyway, you wanted to know about this piece. It looks like a panel from the Metatron Steel. Steely, steely, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm, we're gonna say steel, okay? Which would be amazing if it weren't impossible. See, the Metatron Steel was carried down from heaven by Enoch, way back at the start of time. This wasn't easy. The steel was a stone slab, carved directly from the seat of creation. On it was inscribed every revelation Enoch witnessed in heaven. The amount of knowledge contained on just an inch of this thing would shatter our every notion of creation. So, of course, someone fucking lost it. Lucky for us, someone else was smart enough to copy it. Well, parts of it. This is one of those parts. It's called the Sister of Light. And it's pretty important, at least concerning you. Think back to Genesis. There were only two things in the beginning, light and dark. The Bible says God separated the two, turning light into day and darkness into night. But in actuality, the darkness just stayed the darkness, and the light became the Angelus, or as it was once known, the Sister of Light. What is the Angelus? Well, not to bum you out, but according to legend, it's your other half, Jackie. And all it wants is to rip you open and burn away the darkness. Yish. There's just not an easy way to lay them on somebody. Whoa, hold up. Whoa, 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 whatever you do, for the love of God, don't ever let that blade touch your skin. I mean, what do you think you're doing bringing that here? Well, okay, yes, 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 this is your house, so I guess you can do whatever the fuck you want. But remember, I'm here to help you figure if what you want to do is actually something you don't want to do. Trust me when I say, using that knife falls into the latter category. 
That's a Ferba, which on its own is dangerous enough to a guy like you. A Ferba's blade will pin a demon to the spot. Once that's done, only the person who shanked the demon can free it. Now, it is possible that a normal Ferba wouldn't be strong enough to bind you, but this is the Trinity. Its blade was forged from the three nails that crucified Christ. Not normal! Extremely not normal! If you'd cut yourself with the Trinity, you would have been paralyzed. The only person who could have set you free would have been you, which you wouldn't be able to do because you would be paralyzed. Do you see the paradox here? Come to think of it, you ever decide to touch this stuff, just, just, just ask first. All right, nothing big, just a simple, hey, Johnny, is it okay if I touch this? And I'll say, sure, Jackie. That absolutely will not trap you in a never-ending loop of torment. Or I'll say the other thing. You know, no! You know, the darkness didn't come from the cradle of civilization. The darkness came from nowhere. Which, if you follow the Rothfusian or Rothfushian, I say Rothfushian, okay? Theory, it means the darkness also comes from everywhere. Numerous cultures throughout history make reference to the darkness, even though most of them had never encountered it. For example, take a look at this Aztec totem. An anthropologist would identify it as the key of Mictlan. Mictlan, of course, being the Aztec underworld. This is wrong on an absurd number of levels. Mictlan was a battleground that fed on the souls of the dead. Man, woman, child, didn't matter. They went on to their death prepared to fight, knowing that Mictlan awaited them. Sound familiar to you? It should! It's the darkness! This is just one example out of thousands. Every person since the dawn of time has known, instinctually, the darkness was waiting. It's why so many of us have a natural fear of the dark. To me, that says something, and I don't think you're gonna like it. Part of me believes the darkness is inside all of us. Just a small bit of essence. It's a part of us. Maybe the darkness came from us. Maybe it's an extension of who we are. I don't know. But I do know that if any of those crazy ideas are even partly true, then the darkness isn't going anywhere, no matter what we do. What's on TV tonight? Hey, good to see you back on your feet, boss. Someone's gonna pay out their ass for this, Jackie. You just point the way. Hiya, Jackie. Good to see you back. Those fucking weirdos tried to drag you off. We were able to turn them around after you took so many of them out. We just couldn't get Dan Sarah in time. Frank, I'm sorry about Eddie. You did the right thing, boss. Nothing else you could have done. We're gonna take care of his wife, though, right? Of course. We'll look after his family. Thanks, boss. That means a lot. The one time Nigel finally picks me out, they destroy the place. Gonna need more than me to clean up this mess. Jackie, you don't want to go up there, kid. Nothing you need to see. Ah, oh, fuck, Jimmy. This is all my fault. Occupational hazard, son. I'm just... I'm just so sorry about your aunt. She was one tough broad, you know. Funeral is today. We should get down there soon. Yeah. Let's go. Boss, we're ready to head to the cemetery. Just say the word and we're gone. Time to go say goodbye to Aunt Sarah, Vinny. You go ahead. I'll make sure the boys are ready for you when you get there. When I was 18, running numbers for my cocksucking Uncle Pauly, I used to kill time at Rocco's. Real shithole of a bar. But the waitress, biggest tits you ever seen. I'm pissed drunk this one time, and I hear someone call my name. Next thing I know, five goons are stomping my head in. Fucking assholes put me in the hospital for a week. Two people sat with me the whole time. Jenny and my Aunt Sarah. My last day there, when I finally healed up, and Sarah leans in, slips me a piece of paper. It's got the names and addresses of the assholes who put me in there. One look and I got the lesson. I wasn't gonna make the same mistake those fuckers did.
Chaki. None of this is real. Here you go, Jackie. Come on, Jackie, let's you and me head up. The church put on a beautiful service. Yeah, they did it right, didn't they, Vinny? You bet. Top shelf all the way. Classy. A little long, but you know us Catholics like to talk. You know, boss, we're, we're all thrilled that you, uh, you know, you got your thing back, but, uh, you know, some of the boys are thinking maybe this hit has something to do with that, and, you know, well, no disrespect, but... Just spit it out, Vin. You know that ain't no one's gonna back you up more than me, Jackie. Just give the boys something to go on, okay? Well, not for nothing. You spent four days in the back room with that crazy prick Johnny when by rights you should have been dead. We just want to know what we're up against here, you know? Let's go up. People are gonna be glad to see you back in one piece, boss. I tell you, it wouldn't have been the same seeing your Aunt Sarah off without the old Jackie Estacado. I'm sorry for your loss, Jackie. That's a crazy fucking order to ring some swat gear before how the fucker tries to drag Jackie off, right? After shooting him in the face. But we were all fucked at, and we pushed them back, and then we sent them back in. Yeah, well, we never would have made that last push if Jackie didn't take out so many of those fucking guys. Holy shit, it's Jackie. I can't believe you're back. Someone's gonna pay for this, Jackie. I know this is a tough pill to swallow, Jackie. But she's home now, right? Buried here with the rest of your family. It's a shame Jenny wasn't buried here too, you know. She was family to you. I'm sorry she's gone. She's always with me. Jackie, I know what a terrible burden you carry, but carrying that burden is what made you strong. What'll get you through this? I want you to know I think you're... That's one tough old lady, Jackie. How many times do I have to shoot her before she surrenders? Come on, the walls! <laughs> 
right. Come you on, better man. run. Punish him.
are just a vessel for the darkness, Estacado. You're a flesh-covered suitcase. A temporary... Finish Go ahead. Kill me. You know you want to. This is my reward. I welcome this suffering in the name of the Brotherhood. <laughs> Where's your boss hiding? What makes you think he's hiding, huh? Hiding from weakness like you? <laughs> he's at Hellgate. You oh, remember God, Hellgate, so don't you, Jackie? So many fun memories there, huh? <laughs> Come pay us a visit. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Hellgate, huh? Thanks for the help, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> First time you kill a man, you come to a crossroads. You learn something about yourself. You don't learn what you're capable of or how bad a person you are or any of that bullshit. You learn you can sleep at night after, or you learn you can't. You're either haunted, or you're not. I was 16 years old the first time I killed a man. And I slept like a baby every night since. Everything okay, boss? 